Music has been a significant part of my life for as long as I can remember. I still remember songs my mother sang to me as a child. I remember twirling and dancing to Penny Whistle albums with my brother. Such fond memories. I started piano lessons as a kindergartner. I remember playing in recitals every spring. Mozart's Sonata in C in fifth grade is my most poignant memory of my young piano career. I remember the pride I felt as a fifth grader, mastering, memorizing, performing, and earning awards with this piece. I continued my piano studies through my middle and high school years and chose to pursue piano as my minor instrument in college. This sonata is the piece that made me feel like a real musician for the very first time. While piano was my first love that helped to shape my identity and define myself as musical, the flute is nearest and dearest to my musical heart. When I was very young, my mother and father hosted a young woman in our home while she was studying to be a doctor. Her name was Ada. Ada and I did everything together, from going on bike rides around town, to reading together, to singing together. She was my inspiration, and as a young girl, I wanted to be just like her. She became such a special part of our family that I thought every family had a mommy, a daddy, and an Ada. Ada played the flute and the piano. I vowed I would be just like Ada, and began studying the flute in the fourth grade. I remember Mozart's Concerto in G Major was one she practiced often and I put it on my to-do list for when I was good enough. As I grew in age and ability, I remember fondly the times we would get together and play flute duets on occasions when she was on furlough from her missionary work as a doctor in the country of Pakistan. Mozart's flutes concertos launched me into district, regional, and state band and orchestra competitions for the state of Pennsylvania. I also was a member of the Lancaster County Youth Symphony, auditioning on their Mozart concerto. The experiences with my musical talented peers influenced me greatly and ultimately helped to guide me into choosing music education as a career path. With my musical identity firmly decided, I chose Lebanon Valley College and began the grown-up journey to becoming a music educator. Of all the experiences and memories I made in my four years as an undergrad at LVC, Orchestra with Dr. Dietrich not only claim my fondest memories, but also my greatest personal and musical learning moments. I learned that being a viable and cogent member of a musical group included not just attention to personal musical detail, but also the musical detail of collective sound. It wasn't good enough to just know your part. The dance of collective music making requires students to learn how to learn together. This piece, Capriccio Espanol, was a moment in time during a performance where I experienced the magnificent result of learning to learn together. I had so much pride in myself, my students, and my professor. It is still my favorite piece of classical music to this day, and I cannot listen to it without being filled with that wonderful memory. My strongest memory associated with a song is the hymn, Teach Me Lord to Wait, based on the scripture Isaiah 4031. In August 2006, my only sibling and brother died tragically at the age of 24. It was a time of excruciating loss, especially for my parents. I remember during Evan's funeral, my mother and I stood outside in the church parking lot, broken beyond repair. As my mother wept bitterly on my shoulder, she explained how she could never make music again. At a loss for words, I prayed for wisdom to, comf to comfort us. This song began flowing from my lips <laughs> like an answer, and my mother began to sing harmony along with me. We sang this song over and over, our faces wet with tears. Music came when words failed, and that song carried us through, 
and kept our hope alive during the darkest moment in our lives. My mother says of this time in her life, quote, the music stopped for me for so, so long. For many years, that was the only song I would let play in my head. This song speaks to the amazing power that music has to comfort, encourage, and heal us. I met my husband in January of 2007, just months after my brother passed away. We met online. I was living in Alaska and he in Oklahoma. We both shared and still share a love for music. We began a long distance relationship and spent hours writing letters and emails and messages to one another. He introduced me to his favorite band, Train, and played this song for me. It quickly became our song really spoke to how we felt about each other and the difficulty it is to be away from the one you love. We would listen to this song together often and eventually played it as our song when we had our first dance as husband and wife at our wedding reception. Life has a funny way of bringing you to the highest mountain and then thrusting you over the precipice into the deepest, darkest valleys. In the constant ups and downs that is the journey of life, music has been a constant for me. Another constant is my faith in a loving, gracious, forgiving, and miraculous God. The music I choose in my daily life is music that spiritually encourages me. There's a scripture that encapsulates the spiritual power of music in my life. It's from Romans 8, 26 to 27. Quote, In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us where we are weak. We do not know how to pray or what we should pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays to God for us with sounds that cannot be put into words. Music is my direct line of communication with a God who celebrates with me on the mountaintops and embraces me in the deep, dark valleys. My musical identity is strongest when I sing songs like 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman. When I worship, my spiritual identity and musical identity come into focus to give me the kind of peace, fulfillment, and hope that I can't find anywhere else. I know I belong, I know I am loved, I know I am made strong, and I know I am forgiven and accepted. Now, I have the privilege to teach the love of music to my children. It has been an absolute joy teaching my two-year-old daughter my favorite kid songs from my own childhood. Maddie is a huge Sesame Street fan, and with that love comes all the music that Sesame Street so expertly creates and produces. My daughter is learning that music is expressive, silly, and fun, and our whole family, my eight-month-old son included, sing Sesame Street songs oh, all the time. Every day Even I now, Maddie is creating her musical you. identity and she I loves singing with us and feels the sense of belonging that music so effectually creates. I am looking forward to seeing the role that music will play as she grows and experiences the musical journey for herself someday.